Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Welcome back to another episode of Sales Velocity TV. I'm Andrew. That's Aaron. And I, I just chuckle over here, Aaron, when I, I, I don't know what it is with the intro. Two incredibly entertaining gentlemen. I just, for some reason, it makes me laugh every time I hear it. It's kind of funny. How you doing, bud? I'm doing amazing. It's Good. Friday. Busy week. You know, things are blowing up. Yeah. You know, all over the place. Things get busier. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I feel like there's so much money. There's so much in- in 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 like the ecosystem right now i don't feel like no listen the federal reserve chairman in the united states just this morning on cnbc it's funny you brought that up we did this two episodes ago right the explosion how to build your business post COVID. i think it was episode 20 or something like that he yep. said and you never hear this from like government officials and like fed chairman he said i think the economy is on the cusp of exploding it's like the words you hear from usually investment advisors or marketers, but not Fed chairman. So I think you're right. There's that feeling of like, still that feeling of pent up money and pent up demand. And we mentioned it, we went deep on the show a couple of weeks ago, which I highly recommend if you're listening or watching right now, maybe for the first time on how to grow your business in a post COVID environment, because we're in a post COVID environment right now where we're turning the corner and money is moving pretty quickly and you got to be in the way of it, right? You don't want to be behind it. You want to be in front of it. It's coming whether you like it or not. So you might as well get on the train or it's happening. And- and make, and make hay while sun is shining. Yeah, so we're talking sales prevention department today. By the way, if you're saying to yourself, hey, wait a minute, didn't they do this sales prevention department thing a month or two ago? The answer is yes. We are we're doing vi- it because we like it. We're we, doing it because no. we like it and we feel like it and it's our show. <laughs> that too. But we are visiting the sales prevention department on Sales Velocity TV and radio probably about every four to eight weeks, four to six weeks, because A, it's fun and B, it is probably one of the more instructive topics that we take on because there's so many little things that are going on inside of companies that we see and that you may not be seeing in your company that do prevent sales, literally prevent sales. So we'll we'll give examples here today of some sales prevention victims, I guess we could call them. Are you a vi- Listen, you never want to be a victim. You're not a the- victim. There's no such thing as victim. You're not paying attention and either you do it right or you do it wrong. And if you're doing it wrong, you get what you deserve. But you never want to be a victim of the sales prevention department and end up on here. Let's put it that way. Right? You might be you if, you might be unknowingly creating an excellent sales prevention department. And, and you don't want to have wait. it's the one thing that you don't want to be excellent in the business, right? No. So you before don't. before we dig in, I gotta tell you a funny story. So I hit a I hit a major milestone in my life this week that I haven't told you about yet. I figured I'd you wait. You turned thirty? Thirty five. Oh, oh, congratulations. <laughs> so these are my go to glasses, right? As you know. Um, and I'm going to, I'm actually going to give the company away today of where I get these from, because a lot of people have been asking. And although I didn't wear them for the cool factor, I really got them because I'm under a lot of light and I was having some eye issues and they really, they really work well. Name of the company, by the way, is True Dark. You could Google True Dark. Actually, Dave Asprey, the founder of Bulletproof, uh, the Bulletproof brand is a, is a, um, an investor in that company. That's how I found out about it. But here's the milestone. I, I, I always call them the Dave Asprey glasses. Yeah, exactly. Here's the milestone though. So I, I got my eyes checked out. You know, I was having these eye issues. I went to an opt- optometrist, did all the eye tests. He said, you know, your eyes look good. I had a, like a little infection going on. So it's nice that that cleared up. And he's like, your, your, your long distance eyesight is great, but short distance, you're like, okay, you could go either way. So he goes, he takes like this piece of paper, small print. And he goes, I want you to, I want you to read this. Like, regular reading it. Okay. I read it. Cool. Okay. He goes, I want you to take these two little lenses here, which that was like a little, a little handle. And I want you to now read it like this, which were these little lenses. And I looked at it and it was like, Oh my God, it was almost like a whole new world opened up to me. He said, my friend, I think you might need glasses for reading. Which for me, so the milestone in my life, here they are, by the way. So the milestone in my life is that you're getting old and you need glasses to read. It's that point that everybody gets to where, and I can't really wear them if I'm not reading, but oh my God, Aaron, it made me want to go read a whole book. It was like, I never knew what I was missing because, you know, I had a little fuzziness in the eyesight and I read quite a bit and sometimes the eyes get tired and I'm like, that's just the way it is. And it wasn't the way it is. And he said, I just want you to just hold this up. So the milestone is that at some point everybody, you know, their eyes go a little bit and it, it really makes you feel like you're old. 
So I refuse. I don't know if it's a great milestone or, or not a great milestone, but I actually have reading glasses right now. I'm 40. I'll be 48 this year. So I went, I went, I went the distance. I went deep, but you I'm not what? overly proud about this, but I'm just letting it all hang out here on sales velocity TV today because I want to, and because I can, you don't look a day over 47. <laughs> Thanks man. Anyways, that was the, the story of the day. So, uh, you know what that reminds me of? You ever what? see those YouTube videos where kids are deaf and all of a sudden they put those like you know, yes, machines inside yes. the ear, and then all of a sudden they, it clicks in, and they're like, "Oh, it's like a new world." It's the I, I love those videos. I love watching them, and that's that's. I'll give you, you another great example. So, do you have you ever used the Bose noise canceling? Yeah, ear the ones that cover the ears. They got to be noise canceling, and you hit the switch, and it's like whoop, the whole world just comes into your head, and everything is so clear with no distractions. Great for airplanes. You and I did yeah. a ton of traveling back in the day. Those were my go-to devices for just locking into my head and not having any outside sound. Was, those are my goal two devices to tell people not to talk to me when I'm on the plane. <laughs> Pretty much that too. Good point. Really good point. Let's talk sales prevention today because you have an example. I have an example and these are really instructive. I know you have a deep example, so I'm going to have you go first here. So we're talking about how to eliminate the sales prevention department inside your company. By the way, disclaimer, it exists in almost every company. You might not know it. It happens from time to time. It may be there, but then it may disappear. But at all times, you want to be looking for, you know, that element of are we maybe putting a roadblock in front of some sales at certain points in time? And happens a lot. It happens quite a bit. Yeah. And, and you know, you and I, we're, we're dealing with a very large amount of paid media ad spend on a monthly basis, you know, in, in, in excess of $5 million, you know, per month. And so every little thing matters. You know, I'm constantly searching for the things that are preventing sales. The holes, right? I think the yeah, best way the to holes. say it is the holes. Where, where's the water leaking through, you know, the machine and costing us money? And um, it's been big on my radar again this week. You know, it kind of comes and goes. I feel like I have a good grasp on it. And then every once in a while, I have a client come along and it just makes it rear it's ugly head again, because we're looking at the ads, we're looking at the funnels, we're looking at the follow-up, we're looking at the sales team, we're looking at all the numbers that co co correspond with these things, and we're, and we're matching them against where they should be, so we're constantly optimizing these to make the math work, because especially when you're talking about digital marketing, everything is, is math first, creative second, mm -hmm. and then they blend together to, to create the optimal result, right? And today, we had a client that we looked at where the speed that their website loaded at was abysmal. Ah, load time. And so we were, you know, this is, and to me, this is our mistake. We were looking at other pieces of the process, the ads, the funnel, the copy, the, the, the messaging, like where, where are we missing? Something here? was off. You felt like something was off. Yeah, because the, the, the cost per acquisition was not in alignment with where it needed to be. So then you start going through the different pieces to see where the problem is. And then one of my team members this morning did an audit and showed me that in the last month, this client had lost 60% of their clicks, had never reached their landing page. Because when they hit it, it didn't load quick enough and they bounced. It took too long to load and they bounced. Eey. So... When we're talking about spending twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month on this one particular funnel, that means that you know twelve to fifteen thousand dollars just flew out the window. It was just uh, lit was... on fire and thrown out the window because nobody even saw the page. So in that case, it was a tech issue. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess you can say it's a tech issue, but really, what I want to focus on right now is it's a speed issue. It doesn't matter how good your ads are. It doesn't matter how good your offer is. It doesn't matter how good your funnel is created. It doesn't matter how good your sales team is. If 50% of the people never even see it, you're in serious, serious trouble. So one of the best sales prevention things you can have is a slow loading website. Now, mm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run you through some stats because I brought them up here. And I'm gonna give people some tools, okay? When you look at the networks, they have something, and when I talk about networks, I'm talking about Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snap, you know, all of these different digital marketing networks, right? They have something known as a relevance or a quality score system, 
Okay, why they have that is because they they don't consider the people on there your users. They consider the people on there their users, and they want their users to have the best experience possible. And if your website loads slowly, you are impacting their user experience. It's low quality. And and I have a good friend of mine, Dan Wilkinson, which I took a lot of this stuff from. He's he's an expert in in speed load time uh, online. And, and what he talks about is that load times of your site of 3.25 seconds will maintain your score. Load times over 4.5 seconds decreases your scores considerably. Mm. And load times under 2.8 improve your score considerably. Now, if you have a low score, what happens is the networks charge you more for your traffic little penalty. because the, it's a penalty. It's a poor user experience that you're offering and you get a tax essentially. So not only are you paying more for your traffic, but when you put yourself in the, in, in, in the shoes of your customer, your user, if they're on their phone and, and they see your ad and they click it and it takes too long to load, they just they're go annoyed. Eh. Yeah, they're annoyed. I'm out. I'm we're, annoyed. We're, we're I'm the out. most inpatient society we've ever been now, right? And getting more impatient by the day. They just they just leave. So they just leave or your credibility in their eyes goes down, which is, is, is creating more or you, friction. Or you just get forgotten, which at the end of the day, we're trying to get attention. Let's not try to get forgotten, right? Right. Absolutely. And and to, to drive this home even more, what Dan was saying is each, each network differs. But as a rule of thumb, like I said, that 3.25 seconds is the baseline. Yep. Right, over 4.5 seconds gets you 50% fewer impressions on the on, on in the ads, and a 50% higher cost per click. 50%. Think about how if your business all of a sudden costs you 50% more to run. My, my, what is that? Guess, my guess, Aaron, is very few know about this. Very few, and that's why I wanted to bring it today as a unique topic for people. Yep. I love it. Because we love it. We talk about a lot of different things. And this show is called Sales Velocity. It's about making sales, okay? If I can give you this one thing today and you can go do an audit, which I'm going to show you how to do and fix your site today, that will, without doing anything else, you'll instantly make more money. Mm -hmm. Instantly make more sales. Sales velocity, right? If you're under 2.8 seconds, you get 50% more impressions and a 30% lower cost per click. Three seconds or less is the minimum entry requirement. Mm. That is so the there's your benchmark, eight. right? Right. That's there. your that's that three or, three seconds or less is your minimum entry, right? But if you can get under two point eight seconds, you get fifty percent more impressions and thirty percent lower clicks. It's if you're a above big find, man. Point. It's a big find. It's a. It's I a, mean, we've it, known about it for some time on our side of things, but boy, oh boy, if you're running any kind of paid traffic and you don't know what load time is and you don't know that there's a a a, a a penalty on it and a reward on it either way, right? Wow. It's, you, it's And it's compounding because you're getting penalized by the networks and you're annoying your customer who's bouncing off your page. Double, it's a double, double problem whammy, yeah. that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at this chart right now, which I grabbed from my friend Dan, and maybe we'll put this in our, our show notes, right? He's showing this chart of revenue, okay? So if, if you see it in the show notes later, you'll see on the right-hand side, it says, you know, $0, $5,000, $10,000, $15,000, $15,000 in revenue. Yeah. Okay. If you look on the left side, it says speed load time. It says one second, two seconds, three seconds. Okay. On the three second mark, you'll see in this chart, the revenue on a daily basis is at $1,000 or, or sorry, my apologies is at $5,000. So three second load time, $5,000 in revenue. You'll see in this chart, when it the, the speed load time dips below 1.5 seconds, the revenue that day, $15,000. Up. Up, right? We're talking, and people are like, no, this can't be true. Wow, It is 100% true. You think, you look at your site, you're like, oh, it takes three seconds to load, that's pretty good. $5,000 in revenue in your bank account. You're loading in 1.5 seconds, $15,000 in your bank account. That is not small. And when you look at everything else you offer in the world, product, sales process, marketing, ads, team, 
and you're trying to move all these needles and yet you got this 10,000 pound gorilla of a problem on the front end of your process. You want to talk about sales prevention department? That's a sales prevention department filled with 100 employees doing their best to screw you over every single day before you even get up, before you even start. Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. So, you know, we were looking at it this morning and putting some protocols in place to really, really like make this the first thing we focus on with any client is where are you at today? Where do you need to be? What are the benchmarks? And then tracking, you know, after the first three days, how many people were clicking versus how many people were actually hitting the page. And for us, that's an, it's gotta be at least 80% or higher of people who click hit the page. And for us, on load time, it's got to be three seconds or lower, but we're shooting for 1.5 to 1.8 seconds before we run traffic. And it's a really simple thing to, to find out, right? There's two, there's free tools super, online. You drop your URL. And, and that's what I'm going to tell people next is you yep. can go to two very inexpensive free tools. One of them is called GT Metrics. And you can just enter your URL in there and click the button. It'll tell you exactly how long it's taking to load. It'll score it. Or you can go to Google Page, Google Page Speed Insights. Say that five times fast. Google page speed speed insights. insights and it will give you the exact same thing. It tells you exactly how long it's taking to load, what your score is, what you need to improve. It'll even tell you where the problems are on your page, what's causing the slow load times, right? Do don't run any traffic until you've got this thing zoned in because no matter what you do, it, it won't, you can't win. You can't win. You can't uh, yeah, it, it's it's a it's great. I love it because it it's it's it's, it's the simplest thing you can do from the onset, right? What are the Absolutely. simplest things you can do from the onset? Then you go deep internally, right? But this yeah, is external. I mean, you know what it's like. You know what it's like to go deep. I mean, we go deep on copy, on headlines, on color schemes, on offer stacking, on bonuses, on sense of urgency. We're always trying to move the needle with all this different stuff. Well, fifty percent of the people aren't getting the site. What are we talking about? That is sales prevention 101. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I mean, listen. That's my, we, we, that's my big topic for today. Hopefully people will we, take that. We run and, a boatload of traffic for Pipeline Pro all over the world. I think we have users in 20 plus countries at this point. So, you know, Google, Facebook, Instagram. We can't afford to be loading at six, seven seconds, right? We, we tackled that, what, a year ago, I think? Yep. Speed time down to, I don't know. You would know. I think it's at 2.2 right now. And when we did it, we instantly saw conversions go through the roof. Should probably probably give a little plug to our good friend Jordan here. Yeah. For drop funnels, yeah. which yeah. allowed us to get that speed back because it's on a WordPress platform and not a random funnel builder, right? Yeah, absolutely. He's, as far as, as drag and drop funnel builders go, um, his company, Drop Funnels, has the fastest out-of-the-box load time of, of any of them. There's one, and I won't mention it here because it's just not nice. But there's there's one major one where I've looked at probably a dozen sites that clients have brought to us, and their average speed load time is nine and a half seconds. That's pretty pretty. And listen, in, in full disclaimer, our software company, Pipeline Pro, has a very robust funnel and website builder in it. The yep. disclaimer here is if you're running high volume, high paid traffic, you may need to upgrade your server. Right? It's kind of like if you're racing Absolutely. a racing car on a race, if you're racing in a NASCAR race, you're clearly going to need to upgrade the engine and the wheels that you're using in that race. But the, you know, the normal Ferrari might work perfectly fine pre-NASCAR race, right? So it has Absolutely. to come down to, are you investing a ton of money in traffic? Then you're going to really need to look at speed. Some people aren't investing a lot of money in traffic. It's a little ads here and there. It's referral based. The site is for information purposes, probably not as big of a deal. But you can see very quickly, like if you look at, it, let's say you're marketing in Facebook or you're marketing, you know, in, in Google and their suite of products, you can very quickly see in their analytics on both platforms from click to people actually hitting your landing page. Mm -hmm. What is that number? And the example, like we looked at this morning, 60% of our clicks are not even making it. And the thing is, is that we're, we were, we're getting decent results. But when we saw this this morning, we're like, oh my goodness, if we had 60% more people, we're printing money, mm -hmm. right? So now that- And that maximizing much, dollars big time too. It's a big oh. economic, it's a whole different economic play also. And going back to my point before, where, where some of these, these website platforms out there are like nine second load time. Uh, the example I just gave you, the difference was three second load time, 5K in revenue, 
one and a half second load time, 15K in revenue. We're talking about nine second load time. You you might as well live on Mars and have a lemonade stand because that's that's where you're at. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. So sales prevention on the front end today from you. Yep. Like that. Uh, Hopefully I'm gonna, people can take that and they'll go, oh my God, I need to go and look right away. I gave you the tools to go to look. Do. We'll put them in it's the show gonna notes. Be Two tools. Shockingly bad. It, you're going to look at it and go, oh dear Lord, I had no idea. And then you're going to think back and you're going to say, thanks, Aaron and Andrew, you're the best. We will put them in the show notes. We will put the accelerated funnel builder type stuff in the show notes for more advanced people running high media, doing high media spend traffic. We'll have a nice, nice little breakdown and uh, I'm going to talk more back end, which I normally do, right? I, I love that you did front end today. I'm doing back end. So my example uh, is back end like it tends to be where post customer, post transaction, you know, how do you, how do you increase customer value by doing a better job with the customers, right? It's easier to sell to a customer that you already have than one that you've never gotten, right? So company yeah. by the name, and I hate to expose these companies because some of them are such great companies and it's, it's with, it's with love and respect and the, 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 the desire for wanting you to be better so that you obviously make more money and become a better company than you already are. Because if I buy something from a company, I usually have done a good amount of research on it. I don't randomly buy things, especially when it comes to health and fitness and nutrition, which is a big passion and focus of mine. But there's this great company out there um, called Viome, which does a full analysis on your gut health, right? So what you do is you have to send in stool samples and all kinds of, you know, ugly stuff. And they do a deep, deep, deep scientific analysis on your gut health. How are you digesting? Are you allergic to any foods? Are there any bacteria that you need to know about, right? And it's like a six-week process, right? You, you, you buy the sounds little... Sounds intense, but it sounds it cool. sounds it, It's not really intense. The process is just long, so it, it feels intense. But you'll, they'll send you the test tubes and the instructions and the kit, and you have to send in your sample. It goes to a lab. It takes about six weeks to get it back. And then there's a beautiful app. Great experience, by the way. Beautiful app up until a certain point. Beautiful app. You can see all the different results coming in. There's questionnaires. I mean, they really do a good job of getting the ball rolling. But then when they deliver the results, here's here, here's the breakdown. Your re I get an email. Your results are in. Check the app. Okay, cool. I guess I'll go check the app. So that's okay. The app is really well done. I, I would have I put the results in the email and said, or for more convenience, you can view it on the app. Well, but even okay. better. Let, let me tell you where I'm going. I agree with you is your results are on the app. They're also enclosed here with the PDF breakdown of everything in case you're the kind of person that wants to think baby boomers, wants to Perfect. print it up right. and have it and maybe bring it to a doctor like I'm doing. I'm bringing Great. it to my functional medicine doctor because he needs my gut health because we're trying to find some things, right? Thirdly, though, because this is involved with health and a little bit medical, right? It's more natural, functional than medical, right? But it's still down that path because it can lead to medical, is what would make you not get them scheduled with an advisor, what would make them not say, you can book a 15-minute complimentary consultation with one of our gut health advisors to maybe walk through and get clear on the different elements of the test, and then they might have some recommendations for it because they, they, they always do it with nutrition supplementation recommendations. That's their business. Their business okay. is we can run the test, but naturally, we're going to make recommendations on the myriad of financial uh, of, uh, of nutritional products that we have, which is a great business model, right? Run the test, give scientific data, and then make prescriptions that are natural prescriptions. Great business. So, but let, I so don't, let, me here, let me finish this one thing, Aaron. Okay. I don't love the lack of personal touch to it though. Is that where you were headed to? No, I was going to ask the question just from a purely direct response standpoint. So you, you did, you did the test. Yep. They sent you the results in the email with the PDF. They also said it's on the app. They didn't send the email with the PDF. They sent an email saying your results are in the app. That's the only place they are. Oh, I thought it came with a PDF. No, no, no. My suggestion is it should have. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, have. that's breakdown uh, number one. But but then once you got in the app and it gave you the breakdown, did it then give you like a, 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 a direction or a call to action to then buy some supplements yeah. to solve some of the, yeah. the issues? Here are the, here are the supplements we've customized and recommended for you based on okay. your tests, which I thought was great. Perfect. But that's, but that whole sales process, Aaron, here's my sales prevention problem is living in one little form of media on my phone. It's in this teeny tiny little square. All right. of that potential lives in this little app. That's the right. And what, and what I would have done there is I would have had the PDF accompanying it yep. with the breakdown with links in the PDF to the specific supplements where you could one click over to buy it. So if you're one of those people that preferred to do it in the app, you could do it in the app. But if you're a person who preferred to do it just on your phone or on your desktop or whatever, like they just we could go in there and be like, guys, 
what are you doing in revenue per year right now? Great, I'm gonna add 15% in five minutes and you can just cut me a check. And here's the five minutes. Five very- minutes number one is letting them book some time with an advisor and putting a team in place because people will buy 10 times more from someone that they're speaking with in, in a consultative environment than they will just kind of cold on an app. Secondly, remember, this was a big mail-in thing, Aaron. I had to get the kit. I had to mail in the kit to wait for the results. Why would I not be getting a direct mail piece? No Dang, question. Your results are in. They're at this website. They're on the app. They've also been emailed to you. And, and on that direct mail piece, it could be a postcard, right? On that direct mail piece, you have a complimentary 15-minute session with one of our gut health advisors to talk about options. That's the whole business. I mean, if you're going to run a, 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 a- or, or, or hold, how about this? Take it a step further. <clears throat> they, send you the, they send you the piece of mail. It has the breakdown. It has the suggested- oh, The whole report in it, right? Su- supplements that go along with it. What if they gave you a one-week sample pack of the supplements to take? We're, we're so confident that this is going to, you know, change your life that we've even included the four supplements, seven pills in each. I mean, that would cost them five bucks ish. I talk know. about the reciprocation on that. You go, wow, cool. this, they sent me this. I mean, I feel like I should get on something now or speak to someone. Right. They, and, they went and through then the all call, this. And then the call to action is we're so confident we're going to give it, we're going to give you three days worth so you can start to see how you feel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you like the way that you feel and you like the breakdown that we've got here, we're going to give you a 25% discount on all of these supplements uh-huh. if you order within the first seven days using this coupon code. X. The list, genius. The list is just endless of the things that could be happening and should be happening. It's at least four or five things right there that completely change the economics of the business. So think right. about your business, right? If you're in any kind of business that there is a demo or there's a result or there's a survey, right? There's, there's somebody's looking for answers. There's so you can't bury the answers in one form of media. I think the lesson here is they buried their answer. By the way, the app is beautiful. The recommendations were beautiful. The process is great. Customer service, great professional, great design, super classy environment. But my, my problem is everything's buried on the app. I know we're in an app culture. I know we're in a mobile culture. But that doesn't mean it's the only way people consume. But more importantly than consuming is responding, right? So they consume, but then they need to respond. And if you give people, A, more opportunities to consume, they will respond more. And they will respond in more numbers with their wallet, right? One way to respond. Yeah, you got to think like if anybody took the time to book These are semi-medical results. I mean, this is like – this is – these are like the gut – there was a very comprehensive gut health analysis, I have to tell you. Right. And, and you got to think that if you just put that one option to speak to an advisor about your report. Even in an email, digital, just that. Sure. Who, who on earth is taking the time out of their schedule to book that or speak to somebody who's not saying take my money? I would have booked like right you, away if it was there, Aaron. Your, your close rate would have been like 97%. No doubt about because it. nobody's going to go through that whole process that they did and the mail in and then get the results and then – reach back out and say, I want to have a quick chat about this and not buy something. They would, they would almost feel bad. They would almost feel like I went this far, but I really want to go over the finish line now with the supplements, which is their business. Right. Instead, so it's like, what we got was, how here's can you report. bury that in an app? I mean, and you should have it in the app. As a I mean, starting I point, Aaron. I had a nutritional company, as you know, yeah, with my own example, phone app. Yeah, and, you could, and you could buy the product from within the app, absolutely. But we were hitting them through SMS, through email, events. through live body, through everything. Social events, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, that's how we did a million dollar first month, right? So they got like a, probably. 70% of that equation. Oh, there's no doubt. Like I said, this is a, this is a very respectful analysis of their, of their back end. It's just that 20, 30% that you mentioned can change the whole business in a minute. Yeah. And it's because usually it be- two or three tweaks. Now, listen, the, 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 the rebuttal there might be, or, or the, the resistance there might be, well, we have to go hire this huge team of salespeople wow, or wow. consult me. Yeah. That's an element right there. But I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you what though. That's two steps back to take four steps forward in nine out of 10 times. And, and, by, yeah, and, we, and, we, and, we, and here's the we thing with that. We just had the area. same conversation. We, we did that this week. We're like, you know, yeah. 
we need to go hire a sales manager for one of our companies. Why? Because there's sixty, seventy thousand dollars a month sitting on the table that if we just had one designated person who this was their sole responsibility, yes. we're at that place now where we need to have that person. And it's like, oh yeah, I gotta find him, I gotta interview him, I gotta hire him, I gotta train him. Yes, yes, and yeah, yes. It, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it's a couple weeks. But it's like seventy grand a month. But it's and again, it's like, two steps back to go four steps forward. Even if these guys course. just said, Hey, listen, let's get five key advisors in place. I don't know how big they are. Maybe they could do it with two, right? Just to start. But let's just start the phone. Let's just start the ability to give people a chance for a complimentary session. And let's start the rapport building and let's start the relationship building. And let's start moving people to decisions to get their gut health back to normal or back to a better level, right? And and, and it, again, you just can't bury it in the app. So if you're... Oh, and, and, and here's the thing. You could take it another level. Oh, you didn't book your appointment? How about we start outbounding everybody that didn't book the oh, appointment? Oh, no doubt about hey, it. Hey, you went through all this work. You went and you did stool samples and you mail and da, 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 da. we haven't heard anything from you. You really went through all that work to do nothing? W what's the response going to be for the people they outbound? You outbound know what? phone calls, by I the just way, got, is what he means. I just got too busy. I just got too busy. I got distracted. Listen, there's nothing more I'm serious than I'm so glad than you health. called because I need to do something with this. That's, what, that's normally going to be the response, by the way. We can we can get this started right now. It can show up in your in in your mailbox in two weeks. Do you want it? Do you want to do you want to solve this problem? I want to solve the problem. I just got busy. I got distracted. I got whatever. Can I give you my credit card? Boom. There's another it, really good point. Really good point. You know? An outbound strategy to invite them to book the opportunity for them to book right away when the results are done. How about a phone call that just says we want to make sure you got the results and you're not having a problem that's getting into the app to see them. Oh, you know, let me tell you what's going to happen. Sales prevention. You're going to get about one out of three people that go, you know what? For some reason, I just can't get into this damn app because it's tech. And I don't know where to look for it. And it's confusing. I just thought maybe I'd get it as a PDF. By the way, I sent an email saying, can you guys send me my results as a PDF? And I'm like in the middle. And by the way, I did. Why did I do that, Aaron? Because I'm bringing it to my functional medicine doctor, right? Because I want him right. to have. But I also like to have it. I'm kind of an old school printed up kind of a guy for some things like medical blood tests. I like to print them up, look at them, mark them up a little bit, right? So I wanted that. They don't have that. It's all on the app, right? But the outbound phone call would be absolutely huge. And you could outsource it to a team. There is no shortage of outbound phone calling companies that specialize in high-end, whether it be wellness, whether it be financial services, where they make outbound phone calls to follow up on the thing that you're selling. Now, this is about a $200 to $400 deal here depending on the level of the testing you do. I did the basic, I think it was like 189 or something, right? So right, this, is the a, this is a- The supplements probably aren't cheap either. No, I mean, the we're supplements- We're talking about- Yeah. You know, two, 200 bucks a month probably for whatever they recommended. Depending and on, when you depending look on at, how, how, how much gut issue you have, right? It just comes down right, to and, what your complications are. And, and, and the thing is, we're talking about probably recurring revenue. They're probably on subscription being shipped no to your house. About it, because you know so that if they're on recurring, it's cheaper. Hey, you can buy this one off or, or sure. like most companies, it's 15% less if you're on subscription. Right. So you've, you've got a, 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 the valuation of that company is a combination of the app and the recurring revenue from the supplement yes. subscription. Right. So if, if you're not outbounding and capturing every possible client, on the, the subscriptions, I mean, that, I mean, subscription revenue has so much impact on the valuation of the company. It's everything. It's everything and everything's buried in an app, which blows me away. It's everything if, and everything's buried in an app. If anybody knows this company, tell them to give us a call. We'll make you a whole bunch more money and you can just cut us a check. Pretty simple. I mean, it's not much harder than that. But it does often take, listen, the lesson here is, Aaron, it does often take outside eyes to see this. Sometimes we get so buried yeah. in our day-to-day -day and in our company that we go, oh my gosh, I like I missed this whole piece of the puzzle here. It's totally common. It's yeah, it just, is totally it's common. just it's uncommon to not go look for these things, right? That's really what we want to push you towards here in the show is go find the holes so you can plug them and then go find the massive opportunities so you can scale them. And that's yes. what entrepreneurs do that are agile, that are quick that work with outside advisors, that invest money in themselves, that invest in coaching and consulting, they find the holes and little by little by little, small hinges swing big doors. Next thing you know, they're like, they're sitting on a gold mine, right? Yeah. Little compound effects, right? Little compound effects. So I thought that was a great one today. Yours was perfect because it was front end. Mine was back end. I'm still in that process with them. So maybe they'll clean their acts up a little bit and make a phone call to me. I don't know. I'm hopeful. Um, but man, oh man, if you just adopt a couple of these in your business, it can be life changing. I think these two big things 
are enough to leave yeah. our people with today. It's, there, uh, it's a quick there, there could Half of our listeners might have checked out halfway through the show today to just go, I'm going to check my gone. website. They were gone when you finished with speed tests. <laughs> <laughs> Come back for the biome story, please. It's good. Come so, on back. How, how can people connect with us? Uh, first and foremost, show notes for this one, because we did make a couple recommendations here. There'll probably be four or five that I can think of. So show notes, salesvelocitytv.com. Show notes, me and Aaron, everything, Pipeline Pro, our software company that we use that powers the show, all there at salesvelocitytv.com. And uh, the resources will be there as well, especially because, you know, I've been getting a lot, a lot of questions about where do you get the yellows? You get the yellows from True Dark. We'll put that in the show notes. And uh, Aaron, good one here as always. It was kind of a quick one today, but two really good sales prevention examples. We're back again next week, same time, same place. If you get us live, we're on the Sales Velocity TV Facebook page. If not, Google, Amazon, Spotify, Pandora, and Apple. Did I say Apple? All by radio if you want to listen on the go. We'd love love, love to have you and love to hear what you think of the show. Hopefully it's impacting your bottom line. That's the goal of Sales Velocity TV. I'm Andrew. That's Aaron. And we'll see you on the next one. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. Take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.